Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 19, and I'm reading the first four verses. Hear the word of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. You know, God is so almighty. He speaks to us. He speaks to his entire creation without using a word. This is how almighty our God is. Let us worship him. Let us praise him and proclaim and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Come, let us join together in singing. Sing with me, and can it be? And can it be that I should gain
Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and yes, I wish to welcome you to our worship service today. I truly hope and trust and pray that you will be blessed through our service today and that God will really touch your hearts and touch your minds as we worship together, as we praise together and as we become silent at the foot of the cross. I am so excited because I've been watching the figures on the news on the latest COVID stats and it seems as though the numbers are coming down and not going up anymore and, and that says that we are going to be opening shortly. And I've also heard on the news today that Cyril Ramaphosa is going to have a family meeting on Sunday. I truly hope so. And it is with all that enthusiasm that I am hoping and praying that he opens the church for us. If he does, well then hopefully next Sunday we will all be together in the church worshipping live once again. So please, we must just uphold this in our prayers and I can't wait to be with you once again in the church. But how are you doing? Are you still coping? Are you still okay under the current lockdown and everything that's happening in our country and how we are losing loved ones and the economy and everything? It doesn't look so good out there, but you know what? God is always good. And God is there to be with us, to guide us, to protect us. And He is the one that will take us through these difficult times. But you know what? We must just focus on him and just trust him and we will know that he will take us through this. Come let us commence our service as we praise the Lord in song. The next song we're going to sing now is a song which is very well known. It's got the title of Oceans. But whenever I look at the video of this and I see the waters and the oceans, I'm totally overwhelmed because we all know how big the ocean is and we are but mere a speck of dust when we compare ourselves to the ocean. But you know what? Although we are like a speck of dust, it is God who keeps us afloat in such deep waters. But let's join together in singing Oceans.
Come, let us continue that attitude of praise as we come before Almighty God in prayer. Come, let us pray together. O Creator God, O Lord, we see your beauty in the setting sun, on the mountaintop, in eagle's wings. O Lord, we sense your power in thunder, lightning flashes and in the ocean's roar O creator god we praise you and we worship you dear lord jesus we see your love stretched out upon a cruel cross we can just stand in awe at your sacrifice not knowing what it is you went through but we know it is pure love poured out for all humankind. Oh, precious Jesus, we praise you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we see and feel your power in lives transformed, hearts on fire. We listen for your still small voice, comforting, guiding and calling. Oh yes, Holy Spirit, we praise you. From the moment we awake in the mornings to face the day ahead, you are with us through good times and bad times. Your presence, enough for our needs. Every day, I will praise and glorify your name through the hours of the day in our travels at our workplace you are with us in decisions we make your wisdom enough for our needs oh yes lord every day i will praise and glorify your wonderful name and yes, Lord, as we lay down to rest at night, at the end of the day, you are with us. As we lay our fears at your feet, your peace, enough for our needs. Every day, I will praise and glorify your holy name. Oh, dear Lord God, your love for humankind, present in the beginning of all things, extends throughout history and touches even my life. Your love sees failings and forgives. Your love feels pain and wipes away our tears. Your love get, knows grief and comforts the sorrowful. Your love sees sin. And still loves the sinner. So Lord. As you love us. We come now. And we pray. Please forgive us Lord. When we fail to live lives. That reflect your love. Forgive us the many times. When we take for granted. All that you have done for us. Transform us please Lord. Through your Holy Spirit. And empower us to serve you this day. Empower us to love with your love as we love everyone around us. So, Lord, we pray. Help us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our lesson today comes from the book of Proverbs. And I'm reading from chapter 1. Verses 20 to 26. Hear the word of God. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. 
At the city gate she makes her speech. How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in the mockery and fools hate knowledge? Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. But since you refuse to listen when I call, and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. Wow, what a portion of scripture is that not? But do we understand it? You know what, we cannot understand it unless the Holy Spirit opens our eyes and opens our minds. So let us do just that to understand what God is trying to say to us today. Come, let us pray together. Oh dear Lord Jesus, yes Lord, we have come this morning to hear your word to us, to understand what it is you want to say to us. But Lord, we do not always understand. We see these words and we are English, but yet they speak to us all differently. So Lord Jesus, we want you to make clear to us what it is that you want us to hear, what it is that you want us to understand so that we can find our purpose and your will in our lives. So Lord, we pray that you will touch our hearts and touch our minds so that truly we may see you, that we may hear you and understand. And dear Lord God, as I bring your message to these, your people, I pray, Lord, that you will just give me the necessary wisdom, Holy Spirit, that you will take control of me, and that every word and meditation that flows from my lips will be your words and meditations, and that they will bring you honor and glory at all times. So, Lord, we pray, hold us now and be with us. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we prepare ourselves to receive the message, let us just praise the Lord in song. Let us prayerfully join together in singing our next song. One of my personal favorites, Above All Powers, Above All Kings. So come, let us sing. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here before the world. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what Of 
May I start off this morning by asking you a simple question? And you may laugh at my question, but how many of you have ever read Shakespeare? Now I know, I don't know if it's still compulsory in schools, but when I was at high school, we were forced to read Shakespeare's books. I've read quite a few of them. I just think back on King Lear and Twelfth Night and Hamlet and Macbeth. Now, I don't know to you, but to me, those are very fond memories. I really loved reading Shakespeare. I know other people hated it. They actually hated it with a passion. But my love for the English language is so great. I love literally both English as well as Afrikaans. And and it's a hobby of mine to play around with words. And I very often tease people by playing around with words and especially words that may have a double meaning. You say to me, John, what has that got to do with our lesson today? Come on, get real. Well, you know, it does have everything to do with it because our lesson today comes from the book of Proverbs. Now, Proverbs is a book that has been written with the most wonderful illustrative words. It literally draws a picture to us. It's full of different figures of speech, illustrations and it is just rich 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 in language and yes we believe that most of it we cannot guarantee everything but we believe most of it was written by Solomon remember Solomon King Solomon yes of course we all remember him 
But now when Solomon wrote this, he starts this passage off, he starts Proverbs off, and in this is a question and a quest for wisdom. He sets a, a banquet here, yeah, a, a big duel between wisdom and folly when you read through this. They said to me, John, what is that word? Yes, folly. Oh, it's a word we don't use very often, do we? But it's a word that I love. But it's a word folly you can use. You can use synonyms for that as chaos or not knowing or being lost compared to wisdom. Now, ever since early days, there has always been this quest for true knowledge. Now, this morning I want to differentiate a little bit between wisdom and knowledge. You know, I, I very often say that we get knowledge out of a book, and it's knowledge that mostly has been derived by man. It is through research and experiments and experience that men develop knowledge. Yes, I grant that that knowledge has also been given to man by God. But I want to say to you today that I want to differ differentiate between wisdom and knowledge. And wisdom, to me, is having the skills to interpret and implement the knowledge. So in other words, what does knowledge help you if it cannot be used? You see? So we need wisdom to use that knowledge. Now, in Proverbs, and especially on the passage today, Solomon, who is believed to have written this, personifies wisdom and says that wisdom goes out onto the streets. The lady wisdom, she goes out onto the streets and she cries aloud wisdom to everybody. So wisdom is there. And who writes this? None other than Solomon, who is known to have been the wisest man. Sometimes I wonder about that. Because when I think on how many wives he had, I just wonder if that was wise. I leave it at that. I'm not going to go any further with that. I might just get myself into trouble yet today. But what this passage is saying to us is that people are lost. People don't know where they are. They don't know what to do. We have all this abundance of knowledge and yet we cannot make good out of it. Now let me, let me just stop there quickly and ask you another question. How many of you have come into a town that you've never been in before? And please, I'm not talking of a little town like Nimant or Edenville where they've, they've only got four houses and, and a police station and a garage. No, I'm not talking about it. I'm talking of a nice big city. How many of you have ever gone in there and you've got to get to a certain address but you have not got a clue on how to get there? To make things worse, we have technology known as GPS and a lot of People don't know how to use GPS. So what do they do? They drive and they see if they can't find the street name. Boy, oh boy, and if you're in Durban, the way and the accents that they use in Durban, please, that's not going to help you to ask the people. Have you ever stopped at somebody and you get there and you say, I'm looking for this place, and the guy says, well, mate, you know, you go down here and you turn right, right? 
And then once you've turned right, you must go left, right? That's confusing. And then we don't know where we are going. We're like a chicken with an off head. Running and bumping into everything, not knowing how to get there. And this is what Solomon says. We are lost. And we need to make it our quest to get wisdom. So that we can understand all the knowledge that is at our disposal. I mean, just take a look at it. If you have a look at what is available to us today on the internet, everything is available. If we're looking for directions on Google Maps, it is there. But what do we do with that knowledge? We don't know how to use it. And that is why we need wisdom, and it should be our goal to get wisdom to use that. Now remember, this is coming from the wisest man ever to have lived, Solomon. And Solomon says there's only one way we can do that, and to get that wisdom, we need God. He says we must start off by beginning with God, returning to God. That should be our first step in achieving our goal. And that starts with God. Because why we believe that God is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows what the knowledge is and he knows how to implement it and how to use it so that it can be best used to serve each and every one of us. But for us to do that, we must recognize that God is the creator of all. And when I say all, I don't say all people. I say everything. He is the creator of all people. He is the creator of all knowledge. He is the creator of all wisdom. He is the creator of the entire universe. And when we can recognize that God is almighty and that he knows everything then we can know, we can trust him. We can trust him that he is the one that knows how to help us. You see, God, if you look at the psalmist in Psalm 139, he says that God knows our thoughts even before we form them and put them on our tongues. He knows our words. He knows everything. So if he knows that, he created the world. He created the knowledge. He created the wisdom. Surely, isn't that where we must go to? Then we must also remember and we must be aware of who we are. Because he created us. And God loves us. So don't you agree and think that God wants the best for us? Because he loves us? It's like a parent on a child. Don't we always want the best for our child? And sometimes the, our children don't realize it, but we are constantly telling them things because we know out of experience what works and what doesn't work. Now that's how it is with God. He is the one that can tell us what is the best for us. He understands our situation. He understands our context. In other words, where we stay and the people around us, our community. And he is the one that is able to give us the wisdom to know what it is that we should do. Solomon also says we should recognize God as our guider and as our sustainer. Because we trust God, because we know God, because we've come back to God, we must now also realize that God is a practical God. Remember the word practical? Not practical. Practical with an X means God intervenes and is part and parcel of our lives 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 and a quarter days a year. He's always there. He's always willing to help us. He's always willing to show us the right way. 
He's always willing to guide us. And he is the one through his hand that sustains us and keeps us going. When we say he sustains us, it also means he provides not only monetary, not only food, but knowledge and wisdom to understand and interpret our situation. We also need to know, and Solomon writes this in the passage when he says that wisdom, now personified to be a lady, stands on the streets and proclaims wisdom. In other words, no longer is wisdom only available in the synagogues. Remember, in the Old Testament, with Solomon, there was the temple, which was the synagogue. It is no longer bound to the synagogue, but it's on the streets. It's being proclaimed out loud to all people, not only just the Jews, but to everybody. God will provide wisdom to anybody who wants to come to him to find out what it is that we need to live our lives. It's being blurted out on the streets by Lady Wisdom so everybody can understand. But Solomon also says that we must be careful because this wisdom is available to us. But are we listening? Are we taking what God is giving to us? In the passage that we read, he says, listen to my rebuke. In other words, he's being stern with us. He's saying to us, we're being silly. But we don't even listen to him. And he says that. He's talking to us and talking to us and talking to us. And we are just ignoring him. Day in and day out, we go our daily ways. We do what we have to do. But not once do we include God in that. Not once do we ask God and say, God, I'm in this situation. What must I do? No. We just turn a deaf ear and we carry on and we do our own thing. God actually says that we don't want to listen. We are like naughty children who don't have ears. And he says, he says, I will laugh when calamity strikes you. Wow, those are hard words coming from a God that loves us so much. And the reason he says this is because we don't want to listen. What do we do when our children don't want to listen to us? Don't we punish them? Yes. I know in, in, in the devotions I did on Thursday, I said that God said in, his, in Paul's letter to the Romans, God gave Paul the vision and said, I will hand the human beings over to themselves so that they can destroy themselves in their own chaos. Those words are my words, please. They're not directly from the scriptures. But this is what the scripture says to us. That God just hands us over to ourselves. And what do we do when we are handed over to ourselves? We just destroy ourselves. You want proof of that? Look around you. Look at the world. Look at South Africa. Look all over. And you'll see the world is in shambles the world is in shambles and i still think although god didn't bring COVID 19 he's using COVID 19 to bring us back to him because there is not enough and sufficient knowledge to cure and to stop COVID 19 and now we come to realize we are not as great as what we thought we were. We thought we could conquer. We thought we could do everything. And yeah, with a simple little virus, Corona-19, humankind has realized that we are not so great after all. And now we need a higher power to help us. That is why every day on social media and all around, 
I hear how people are crying out and saying, Come, let us pray. Come, let us pray. You see, we need God. Because He's Almighty, because He's omniscient, we need Him to help us. So you see, folks, we must stop turning a deaf ear to God. We must listen. He speaks to us. He speaks to us in His creation. He speaks to us through people. And he speaks to us through his holy scriptures. So we must be attentive. We must hear what God is saying to us. How do we know it's God speaking to us? Well, when we get the advice from wherever we get it, just ask who's being glorified out of this. And if we can honestly say it's God, we know it's God. In my conclusion, today the last point i want to raise that solomon has raised he says we must live responsibly under god look it's easy to teach about god and to tell people about god but do we live what we preach remember that old english idiom we must practice what we preach again we back to the wonderful language do we practice what we preach you see god wants us to be his representatives so that people can see him in us in the way we walk the way we talk the way we live our lives the way we respond when we do not agree do we start insulting one another do we hurt one another when we do not agree with them no, we're not supposed to. We are supposed to exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. So live responsibly under God so that people can see that God is in us. My challenge to you for this week and for the rest of your life for that matter is to seek God's wisdom so that we can use the knowledge that is at our disposal. You know what? It will just make our life a heck of a lot easier. It will make life a joy to live in. No more depression. No more agony. Knowing we have hope and we have God. Amen. Please join me as we come before the Lord in prayer. Oh dear Lord God and Heavenly Father, Lord, we've heard your word to us today, Lord. And yes, Lord, we are embarrassed. We are ashamed, Lord, in how we have rejected you, how we have not focused our lives on you, how we have not even acknowledged you in our daily lives at all, Lord. But Lord, as we come today, we acknowledge that we have all this knowledge and this wealth of everything, Lord, but yet we don't know how to use it because we use it and our motivations are totally wrong in life, Lord. Instead of living our lives and putting you as our main goal so that we should be reconciled to you. So, Lord, we, we come with our tail between our legs, asking you, Lord, to please help us and to guide us and to show us what your wisdom is. Lord, we pray that you will give us that wisdom to use the knowledge to bring glory to your name so that your kingdom may be built. Help us to realize that life is more than just wealth and about me and about everything I do, but rather that it's about you, Lord, and everything we do should bring you the honor and the glory. Lord, help us to to realize, really realize this and help us to be the way you want us to be, putting you first in our lives, putting you as our main priority, not as what other people want us to be or as the community demands of each and every one of us. So, Lord, we pray, help us. Help us that we can do that so that we know that your righteousness 
can be our righteousness and that we can use that to make our lives so much easier, so much more joyment out of life so that we do not be so dis depressed and distressed and anxious and fearful because Lord it is you that gives us life and life in abundance and makes our joy complete. Oh Lord, we thank you that you take an interest in us. We thank you that you give us this wonderful grace, Lord, and it's grace and mercy and salvation day in and day out and you are part and parcel of our lives, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh Lord, we cannot praise you enough. We cannot say thank you enough. But again, we just want to say, this amazing grace that you've given to us, how wonderful, how excellent it is that you love us and that you empower us to love you back and to love one another. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the mighty name of the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Let us conclude our service today in joining together in singing a wonderful song. It's a, it's a fairly newish song. And it's, it's very upbeat and it's very nice. But I want you to l read the words as you sing. It's got the title, This Is Amazing Grace. But read it and as you sing it and try and pick up the tune, I want you to make this a prayer. And as we proclaim God's amazing grace. Come let us sing.
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy. Is Folks, I'm so sad to say that we have come to the end of our service for today. So receive now the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord allow his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and lift his countenance upon you. But most of all, may he grant you his peace and his love, yea, now today and forevermore. Amen. Folks, it's been an honor and a privilege for me to share God's word with you today. It's been an honor of a privilege for me to come into you wherever you are, in your homes or on the road or in your office, wherever you may be. It's been an honor to do and to share with you. In the week that lies ahead, may God bless you richly. May he journey with you and may you respond in taking his hand and walking through this week with him. So, until we meet again, stay safe, stay healthy, and always remember that Jesus is only a prayer way. Goodbye now.